people can easily get obsessed about cameras and talk about this camera has better autofocusing and this camera has better light metering potential and people are forever doing it with new cameras this has just gone come on the market and that is all very interesting and I get quite obsessed about it myself but surely the most important thing is at the end of the day the photograph what you see what you respond to why you are responding to it why you're taking that photo what makes you want to take that photo what you are including in the image so I firmly believe the um, photograph comes first but it's useful to have a camera which can do what you want it to do sometimes you might find the most basic of cameras actually do what you want and you might really enjoy a really basic camera last weekend I thought I would have a little go with this Minolta it's been lying in a box for quite a long time and I thought let's have a go with it I've had um, a similar time using um, uh, old Olympus and uh, Nikon um, of a very similar build this camera came out in 90 um, was it 1990 yeah I'm pretty sure it was 1990 so it's before digital gets really big and major digital at that point was incredibly rare actually i think there was a couple of cameras out so the compact market was a very strong market and i think all the big players like nikon pentax minota they realized that it was important to be in that market because your customer for your compact camera might decide to move up this has a moderately wide angle lens it's a 35 mil lens I think the f-star is um, 4.5 it's got auto focusing it isn't the highest build quality in the world it's basically plastic it's fully automatic loading and it does load incredibly easily I believe it was called the freedom camera I think in the states and as I said really easy to load a film and it's basically point and shoot it has a flash but because it is so light and because you've got this slightly wider view I found it extremely good for street photography and when I took it out last Sunday it was a dreadful day it was very red it had been raining it was miserable I would have thought it was down to its 4.5 um, stop it's a DX coding if you're using a non DX film the camera will default to 100 ASA um, and I had actually put in um, a, a cassette without the DX coding because I had to use some bulk FP4 film so how did I get on let's have a look at some of the images I took and I will talk through them as I said it was a really miserable day and you can see here how miserable it is the right angle lens definitely has a little bit of distortion on it and the shutter speed isn't enormously fast as you can see with this photo there's some blur motion of the car passing sometimes you can, it slightly goes at the edges I feel it's interesting looking at this photo of high with the bottom of high street Fordington the sign is nicely in focus on the right hand side the street sign where the warning sign of 30 is a little bit soft but there's a feel to the photograph I quite like it is a little bit rough it is it's grey it was a grey day it was a grey Sunday and to me this is definitely saying grey Sunday you, you could always say what is the best weather for a photograph and that is such an impossible answer to find because you can go out and it be wet and it's you get a feeling you get a but surely that's the whole thing about photography is that 
um, you just sometimes feel like taking photographs, you see things, you understand things, and other times you can go out and you can't find a single image you want to take. It depends on your mood, it depends on the weather, it depends where you are, it depends on so many factors. See again, this is quite interesting that it's very sharp on the right and not so sharp at the bottom of the street and left. You, some, that is quite a odd image if you look at it really carefully, how it can be in focus so sharply in one area and not another. I rather liked this house where they are taking off the right um, render and it's exposing all this wonderful brickwork. It slightly reminds me of some of the bricks you get in old paintings, Dutch paintings. And that's the street it sits in. It certainly was a grey Sunday. Again, yes, the focusing isn't always that sharp, but I don't know, it lends it, there's something about this camera and it doesn't particularly, it, the lens is a bit glary. But again, that shot of saying pedestrians is exactly what I wanted. A tattoo shop in the high street. Again, it's slightly um, hazy at the top. But after taking so many digital photographs that are so perfect and so many high coloured things, I can't help thinking sometimes it's really nice to get something that seems to be honest, something that seems to have, in my mind, some integrity. Sometimes the most common objects make a photograph um, or appeal to you and um, might not appeal to anyone else. Well, I enjoyed using the Minolta Reaver. It had an ease of use, it has a lightness, and the fact that some of the results were slightly unpredictable, I actually quite enjoyed. I wouldn't use it on a work assignment. I wouldn't use it when I'm um, really wanting to be particular about my shots but if I want to have some fun if I want to um, take a risk a camera like the Riva is not a bad starting point thank you again for watching bye for now